Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a Total War tutorial for beginners for Total War Room 2. Now before I begin, I should just say that I have done a previous uh, beginner's guide or tutorial for Shogun 2. On the screen right now you will see a clickable link. If you want to look at that, please check it out. The video's done quite well, lots of people found it helpful, certainly beginners, and yeah, just thought I'd get out of the way. So, Total War or Room 2, the big enigma that is Room 2. I have been playing Rome 2 for a long time. I played it when it was released on September the 3rd, 2013. I've played some of the DLCs. I haven't played all of them. I haven't played uh, Wrath of Sparta. I don't actually own Wrath of Sparta yet. The emblem appears on the screen anyway. Um, I have played in one or two tournaments. Not really more of a, much of a multiplayer person. I'm more of a single player campaign and that's kind of what this tutorial is going to be aimed at. It's going to be for beginners, people who haven't played Rome 2 before and are thinking of buying it or at least wanting to see what the game looks like, how the mechanics work. So that's what this tutorial is going to be. Um, although I do suggest sticking around if you are a more experienced player, you might pick up one or two tips which you might not have been aware of uh, yourself. So there we go, that's the introduction out of the way. Um, I'm just gonna click now onto a new campaign. So we're gonna go on to Grand Campaign. I should just say, we have a prologue campaign. If you are gonna play Room 2, probably best to play the prologue campaign first. That way you will learn all the game mechanics uh, it'll tell you about the campaign map, the battle map, and how certain things work. But we're going to go on to the grand campaign. And there we go. We're going to play as Rome. Now this is what the uh, campaign structure looks like. It's pretty much the same thing for every Total War game. So for example, you have Rome, you have Carthage, Balkan tribes, and you have a bunch of uh, factions here. So we have the Odrysian Kingdom, Getai, the RDI and Tylus. Um, we have the Gallic tribes, we have the successor kingdoms. Greek states, Iberian tribes, nomadic tribes, Eastern empires, Britannic tribes, and Germanic tribes. So it does vary. Some of these factions are free factions, which Creative Assembly release. Some of them are DLC factions. There are a couple of factions I don't own on here. Um, I don't own I don't own the Black Sea colonies, and yeah, you know, I didn't see the point in it. But that's just down to my personal preference. There might be those of you out there that are watching this and might think, oh, I wouldn't mind playing as the Balkans. I wouldn't mind playing as Pergamon. Well. That is totally your prerogative and it's totally up to you whether you want to play as them. But what we're going to do for this tutorial, we're going to play as Rome. And like my Shogun 2 tutorial, I'm going to put it down onto a pro, pro on hard. That's kind of in between. We have easy, normal, hard, very hard, legendary. I usually play on legendary or very hard. I, I tend to mix it up between those two difficulties. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we will play on hard. Now, Rome's initial challenge is easy gives you the start here, it gives you a little bit of a description about the faction, I'm not going to go into all of this, and then on the right hand side it tells you, so but here we have Roman legions, so we get plus one recruitment slot in all of our provinces, and bread and circuses, so we get plus one food in all of our provinces. It tells you a little bit then about each individual family, so you can play as the Julia, the Junii, or the Cornelia. I'm going to go with the Julia, which is of course the house of Julius Caesar himself. And it tells you then where they're from, just a little bit of a backstory basically. And then on the bottom right corner we have cultural oppressors, who plus 25% public order penalties due to the presence of foreign cultures. Barbarian subduers, plus 10% morale during battles against barbarian tribes. And then Romanization is plus 4 to cultural conversion. These are just certain stats. It does vary from each, each faction that you have. So it's, it's basically, it's up to you as the individual yet again. Try different things out is what is what my advice would be. And then these two little options here, we have campaign settings. So advise help. I've got it on none, but if you're brand new, you might want on low or high. Show AI player moves. It's limited. It'll keep it on limited. We can have it on off or we can have it on full. Battle settings. We've got nightmare mode, which is the, um, the scare everyone trait to all units. That was the Halloween special, which they released back in Halloween. Battle at realism mode. We're going to keep that off for now. And then battle time limit. I, I have that on just in case the game bugs out. I can always fast forward it. And we have it as an hour. So there are my settings. And then we have the victory conditions. So military victory tells you what you need to get. So basically 90 settlements either by direct ownership or through client states and military allies. It tells you what settlements or provinces you need to get. So Italy, Magna Gratia, Aquitania, Armenia, Africa and Britannia. Maintain 180 units in total and maintain 60 naval units. That's for a military victory. If I wanted to go for economic, it would be different. A couple of different settlements there and a few more different things that we have to do. And then the same then for cultural. Again, this is the, exactly the same for each and every different um, faction that you play as. It will vary. 
So there we go, that's the basic overview screen at the start of every single campaign. So we're going to jump straight in, we're going to click the start button and the game will load up and this will give me a chance in the loading screen to tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, I'm a YouTuber and I've been doing Total War YouTubing for about two years now. I love Total War, I've been a big fan of the series since the first Rome Total War which was released back in 2004 and what got me into Rome Total War was a series that used to be on television. Um, Oh god, what was the name of the television series? It wasn't Decisive Battles, because that was the American version. Uh, the name seems to elude me at the moment. Um, oh my god. Time Commanders! I remember it. It's Time Commanders. Yes, uh, Time Commanders was the series, and basically they used uh, an early version of the Rome Total War engine. They would have contestants on the screen, and they would pretend to be battle commanders and lieutenants, and try and perform their own strategy, and they would have to try to recreate or change history in historical battles it was very good very entertaining i would definitely advise you if you are interested in total war and history to put a youtube search in because there are some videos on on youtube from time commanders it's a very good series and you may enjoy it so there we go i just filled that nice little little loading time then with a little bit of a backstory about myself and why i love total war and i've picked things up over the years with total war which i feel i can help beginners and help new people especially with campaigns you are at war so here we go. I'm actually going to skip this, okay? Now, you can read that if you want to. Basically, the advisor gives you a little bit of a... Well, basically, he's set in the scene. He tells you a little bit about what happens in the campaign. Um, I turn it off because I don't tend to listen to it, but again, that's up to you if you want to listen to him or not. It's just a few sentences of saying uh, why we are Rome, what has gone wrong, where we are now, that sort of, sort of thing, basically. So straight away, on the screen, objective issued. So it tells you then, ascend to my blood, undertake bold undertakings. From humble beginnings come great things. So <coughs> this happens pretty much on every campaign. What it's telling me is to completely control two provinces, either by direct ownership or through client states and military allies. What this will do is it will give me 2,500 denarii. So a nice little mission to begin with. Always worth going for that. So if I click on Rome, as you can see, this is one province. This is Italia. This is what the screen looks like. We own Rome. And we own Neapolis, hence why we can build things. This is what the build screen looks like. If it has a yellow arrow above it, it means it can be upgraded. And if it's got this undeveloped land, it means that we can develop the land and it will give us a brand new build slot to build something new. We don't have Velathri and we don't have Ariminum. They are both in the north and they are both held by the Etruscan League. As you can see on this border, in Rome Total War 2 or Total War Rome 2, yellow indicates us as a nation, home and red indicates enemy. So just by looking at that, I can see that the Etruscan League are at war with us. Another way to do this is to go on to Diplomacy, which is the far end here. If you hover over it, it does come up. You can also press 9 to go onto it for a short, for a short key. And this tells you, basically, all the factions you know. So Massilia, Veneti, Etruscan League, Rome, Carthage, Syracuse, Epirus, RDI, Sparta, and Athens all pop up on the screen. I know all of them. They're all within our reach. If I zoom out, as you can see, the map is much, much bigger. We don't yet know all the rest of the factions because we haven't come across them yet. Now, what we can do on this screen, we can highlight these arrows so we can sort by attitude. So, Epirus hates us, the Etruscans hate us, and Carthage hate us. Those are the three that don't like us at the moment. But the Etruscan League has two swords, and if you hover over it, it shows at war. So, we know that we've got to fight the Etruscans straight away off the bat of this campaign. And we know that Carthage and Epirus may end up attacking us eventually in this campaign. So we need to prepare for that. And if we click it again, it'll show us the factions which like us the most. So as it looks like, it's the RDI, Athens and Massilia and Sparta. They all like us. If you hover over, it tells you. So they condemn my cultural aversion because we're a different culture. But that's it. So it's neutral. Athens actually likes us a bit better than them because of military actions against Epirus and trespasses against Epirus. Because Athens doesn't like Epirus that much... Anything that I do against Epirus means that Epirus will hate us more, but Athens will like us more. Meaning that getting a trade or an ally out of Athens will become more likely as time goes on. These are all little things you need to work out in the campaign. And as you can see, if you hover over this one back here, it shows us who we are trading with. This is green. It says we're already trading with Syracuse. And projected value is 81. That's 81 denarii per turn. It's worth pointing that out. So there we go. So what we're going to try and do... We're going to try and get something with Athens. So it's, it's probably unlikely that we'll get something on the first turn. How to do this? You just initiate diplomacy. You click on this tab here. 
add offer or demand and it gives you all the options so a non-aggression pack is usually the best thing to go with straight away in a campaign and it's moderate chance of it happening what that means a non-aggression pact it means that i can't attack them and they can't attack me if either of us do we break that pact and other factions then will hate that faction whoever the perpetrating faction is so we're going to try this one it's been rejected like i said the first turn usually doesn't get you usually don't get anything the rdi we can try with as well so we're just going to go with a non-aggression pact with them it's moderate they've rejected as well so who else do we have left we have Massilia. non-aggression pact it's low so it's not, not even worth doing it with them and then we have of course sparta so we'll try it with them moderate it worked with sparta that's good that means they can't attack me now sparta and that means that there might be a good chance of trading with them now the only thing you i should say about sparta is they don't have a port which means they can't trade you need to have a trade in port or you need to be landlocked they are the two kind of requirements so it comes up red it means you cannot trade because sea route is not established in their capital and syracuse we we'll try a non-aggression pack. It should work with them, and it did. So there we go. Two non-aggression packs straight away. And Syracuse likes us now because of this, so that's good news for me. And I know my south should be relatively safe for the time being with Sparta and Syracuse. That means I can now concentrate on the north and my war against the Etruscan League. So before we get into the whole battle and campaign stuff, I should show you the uh, toggle by here. If you click on the faction emblem, it brings up this screen. That's our emblem, House of Julia, and my faction leader is Lucius, Ju Lucius Julius Libo, or Libo. This is the summary page. This tells us everything, basically. So, culture, Roman, regions owned four. Treasury is 4,000. Capital is, of course, Rome. Provinces owned none. That's because we don't own a full province. We share in with the, the Etruscans and with Syracuse. We need to sort that out in the future. Prosperity is moderate. And then it tells us our Imperium level. It's level two. And that means we can have four armies, two fleets, we can issue one edict, we can have one champion, we've already got one spy, and we can have one dignitary. Agents work differently, um, but they're also quite similar as well. Basically, they all do the same thing, but slightly differently. That's my only thing. Agents are not really as good in this game as they are in Shogun 2. There's not much I can, depth I can really go into. Um, I can quickly show you them. So if we locate our spy... How may I serve you? counterintelligence best thing to do with my spy is to take him north so this yellow kind of border around here shows the distance he can walk and this green bar indicates his movement order so if i click to here for example you'll see that his as green arrow has gone down once he gets past the half and uh, that indicator for example if it, with an army there are different stances if it goes under half i can't fortify and i can't change the stance uh, that's really what it comes into the whole kind of bar thing there i'm going to use my spy and i'm going to take him to Velathri because that would be good i can get some good intelligence i can find out what the etruscans have and as you can see straight away we can see the thunderbolts of the nine aurelius tri 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 oh my god traenus traenus <laughs> you know aurelius we call him he has three units but Velathri looks relatively undefended now my advice here would be to go straight for Velathri. We can probably do it with this army this As turn. And that's what we're going to do. We're not going to do it yet. We're going to give you a bit more of a tutorial first before we get into a battle tutorial. So we're going to show you some more things. So as you can see, the Etruscans have Alia. Alia. Oh my god. My, my pronunciation's gone completely to pot. Alia. Al Al Alia. Al Alia. That's right. Al Alia. And Coralis. So. Uh, that's Carthage there. Now, as I said previously, Carthage don't like us. It's possible they'll go to war with us. And we have to be ready for them as well. But the immediate threat, of course, is in the north. We have an army here. Now, a good way to find out what forces you have on the campaign map is this toggle screen here. So click this, event messages. This tells us the objective. Um, each turn, there'll be different things on here. So it's worth keeping an eye out on them when you're a beginner. This one is forces. So Poshima Scapula is my spy. I have my ship here in the port. The first legion is there and the second legion is there so this gives us a quick overview of where my forces are this one is provinces so it tells us the two provinces are italy and magna gratia in the south this is the value which i'm getting so i'm getting nearly 2000 from italy and i'm getting in just about just over 300 from magna gratia and other provinces then which are nearby then 
provinces which we are aware of on the campaign map. And then finally we have this one here which is the factions. This tells us again, this is basically another quick way, rather than going to diplomacy, if you just want to quickly check to see who likes you and who doesn't like you, you can go onto this one. You can do the same thing with the toggle, so who hates me but there, who likes me there, uh, and so forth. And you can hover over them as well. So it's just a quick way of doing it without actually initiating any kind of diplomacy. That's basically that screen. On the bottom right, that's my current treasury, so I've got 4,000 denarii to spend. I'm actually making 2,424 per turn. I currently have two food. As long as I'm in the, in the plus with that, as long as I'm above zero, or above minus one, I should say, then I'm okay, and that's the year. So it's summertime, and it's 272 BC. The other thing is there. This one here, if I click on this, it's a strategic overview. You can toggle different things. I understand that a Tiller Total War is going to be very different to this, and there'll be a lot more features along the top. But this shows me faction ownership, so it tells me the red is, is me, blue is against, white is Carthage, just the faction colours, basically. This one is diplomatic status, so yellow is me, red don't like me, white and neutral. So at war with them, neutral with everyone else. And then this one is public order. So as you can see, public order is not too good at the moment. That's probably because we are sharing our borders. It's important we take this from the Etruscans as quickly as possible. Region wealth, so Italy is actually Rome. Obviously, it's going to have a lot more wealth than the rest of the Italy. And then finally, we have the region growth. So the growth is pretty good. It's all green. The greener it is, the better, basically. And that's this strategic overview. Diplomacy I've shown you. Technology is the other big one. So technology, if you click on them, it tells you how many turns. So it will take me two turns to get manipula organization. It will take three to get training reforms. And in the bottom left, if you keep the mouse cursor hovered over, it tells you what it enables. So for training reforms, minus 2% recruitment costs for all my units in all provinces, and also minus 2% upkeep costs for all armies. And it enables a building of an auxiliary barracks. That sounds good, so we can go for that. So if I click on it, it'll take three turns for that one. It'll take two turns for that one, which is five. And it'll take two turns for that one, which is seven. So seven turns to get to there. This is all, the red ones are all military. So anything to do with war, it will be all these. So you've got management, you've got tactics, and you've got siege. This is civil, and then that is economy, philosophy, and construction. And that basically enables different things within the individual settlement. So upgrading your farms and stuff like that. This one then is your treasury, so I can have my tax all the way up if I want to, but the public order is going to go terrible, it's going to be menacing, so I'm just going to keep it on normal for the purpose of this. And it tells you then, if I bring it up of course, I get a lot more money, bring it down for a lot less. If you, if you get p a bad public order, it, it might be worth bringing it down a notch, just for a turn or two to see how things go. This tells me how much my army total is and how much my navy total is, and it tells me the tax effect on the public and the growth so that's what this screen is and then objectives like i showed you on the first screen these are mini kind of objectives so this one is of course to control the two provinces assertion of power so hold the entirety of at least one of these provinces that will give me another thousand denarii etruscan decline so subjugating the etruscans will give me some money as well and then the punic wars start the war with carthage just like what actually happened in history and all of these mini objectives will give me denarii and give me money and this is the main objective for military, economic, and cultural, like I showed you on the first screen. Whoops, I just fell in, nearly nearly fell off my chair. <laughs> so, time for the battle. That's pretty much the campaign map in its fullest. I'm going to show you quickly um, movement orders. So, the ship, if you hold over the ship, stance, I can go for raiding. If I do that, our finances will change. We can, As you can see, it shows like what the income are. On the trade routes, it's worth doing that on a trade route. You might get a little, little bit of money. We've got patrol, and, and you just you just hover over them, and it'll show you what you get. So this one, double time, I actually got more movement range, but by doing so, I actually reduced the line of sight, and I actually reduced the morale of my unit. I'm actually just going to have it on none for now, no effects. I'm going to bring them up north because I do... Actually, no, I'm not going to bring them up north because... Alalia is there, and it's probably worth having my ships nearby. So what I'm going to do is just embark, or disembark at Neapolis, just to give me a few extra bodies there in case there is a counterattack. So I'm al already planning my kind of strategy. I'm thinking maybe a counterattack by Carthage or the Etruscan League if if Carthage goes to war with me there, and you know it's better to have more numbers there. I'm thinking about counterattacking. I'm thinking about attacking the Etruscans here. They've got an army, the Thunderbolt of the Nine. Only three units and Velathri. If I click on Velathri, it shows you, if you hover over the little castle, it says six units and it tells you what they are. So 
Italian cavalry, Italian spearmen, two mobs, two levy slingers. Not too much of a problem, very weak force really. And then the same then with Rome, if I click on my own settlement, as you can see, the same thing. I got levies, plebs, Rorari, Hestati and Principes. And then Neapolis, because it's a port settlement, I've actually got some garrison of ships. So raiding Hemiolias, I've got two of them as well. So that's another thing to pick up on. I think that's pretty much it. I can actually spend some money here, so I might actually do that. So I'm probably worth upgrading Rome. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to click on this and develop land. And we're going to click the expand city cursor. As you can see, the city will grow on the map. One of the new features they added in this game. And now Rome is much bigger. We have a garrison of nine and we can construct something new on that plot of land so what we can do we can get a suburb suburbia that will give us 100 wealth from manufacturing consecrated ground our public order will go up and latin culture will grow up that's probably a good one because our public order is minus one we could do with some bonus public order i could go over a field of mars to give me uh, a better garrison however as you can see i've already got a field of mars so what you've got to do is check what you already have so there's no point doing that because it'd be a waste so it's either going to be the public forum, consecrated ground, or suburbia. I'm going to go with consecrated ground to get help with my public order. And I've just spent some money. As you can see, my treasury has gone down to 3,300. The other thing as well, you can spend money on units. To recruit a new unit, you just click on the recruit units tab, and that will recruit them. As you can see, it queues the unit. One turn to get a Hastati. One to get Rorari. One to get a Velite. Another one to get Levies. And I can get, I can actually get six units all together in one turn before the next turn starts. I'm not going to recruit any units there though. I'm going to actually attack them this turn. If you do recruit units, it means you have to stay still on the map for a turn. So be wary of that. You don't want to be recruiting units with a large enemy force nearby. So you need to think about that when you, when you are on the campaign map. You can also hire mercenaries. Click on that. I can't actually get them at the moment but I can actually get mercenary Italian spearmen and if you hover over them on the left hand side it tells you all the different stats so 160 that's the money you will have to pay every turn once this unit is out so bear in mind 160 will come off of my treasury each turn experience once that goes up they get a chevron chevron will increase little things like attack damage weapon damage stuff like that um, 160 that's the amount of men this unit has and that's the amount of men they currently have in a full unit and then it tells you all the different stats and also then it has some of the traits so they are disciplined they are they have formation attack and they can hide in forests so it's worth knowing stuff like that if you're going to fight in forests or in the snow and stuff like that so what we're going to do click on the unit make sure they're all selected and we're actually going to issue an attack order on this army here release and the army attacks they've actually ran away they don't wish to fight me that's fine i don't mind this but as you can see we have enough turn turn uh, movement up range to actually get to Velathri. so i'm just going to click on Velathri, and there we go i can auto resolve this battle and it's probably worth auto resolving the battle because they have mobs slingers italian spearmen and cavalry but i'm going to fight this battle for the purpose of this tutorial so i'm going to click the assault i should warn you that um there are some other things on here we can encircle them and that means that we will basically hold out attack in for a turn we can auto resolve we can assault and we can actually break the siege if we don't want to fight them as well um, we're going to attack of course so we'll click the assault button and there we go it will load up also you might have noticed there's a red skull above me then on the campaign map that's attrition when you're in enemy territory that attrition will be on especially in the winter so you must be wary of that. Basically, attrition means that you will lose a certain percentage of men each turn. So something to keep your eye on. This map here shows you what the battlefield looks like. They've actually sallied out to fight me on the field. So we're not going to have a siege battle. We're actually going to have a field battle. Now, I have quite a lot of missile troops. And they have very lightly armoured troops. So it's worth throwing them in first. I'm already thinking about my, my tactics. It's totally up to you what tactics you find useful. I've actually gone from rain to dry because I'm going to be using missile troops. I want them to be as effective as possible. As you can see, effects, no adverse effects, so that's good. And there we go. This is the camp. This is the uh, battle map. So we click start battle. But before we do, I'm just going to quickly show you my unit. So we can use the mouse wheel to scroll in close to see what they look like. And there we go. That's what they look like. We can click the N button. And that zooms in like so. And if we hold down the mouse wheel, we can drag it along and zoom in like so that's what the end button does 
we can actually click the K button and that turns all the things off so if you want to make machinimas it's worth doing that because you can then see all your units without having all the information on the screen press K again to bring it back on if you click on a unit and hit the I the oh, sorry hit the insert button it gives you unit cam and of course you can press the space bar to toggle manual control and press page up and down then to toggle between each individual man in this unit that's what that does and click just click then to zoom in and zoom out always good to use when you're using machinima it's probably worth doing that in smaller battles like this and of course there are other things you can do so for example i'm going to click my four astati. units of astati this unit of astati incidentally has a giant eye above it that means he's hidden so he's over here as you can see where is he there he is it's showing that his unit can't be seen so once they start the battle the enemy you can't see me i can actually see the enemy from here as well there they are they're over there they're not hidden so you can see them you can also see them on the tactical map like so if you click on the tactical map just like the strategic map on the campaign you have the tactical map you can issue move orders see i can move them along, along like this you can't actually attack them i don't think it's just, it's just movement basically and that's all that is so what we're going to do i'm going to click on this unit of astarte and i'm going to hold down the shift button oh my good good god hold on the shift button and click on this unit of astarte I'm then going to hold Control and G. That's given me a grouped formation. They will stay in that formation like so, as you can see. Any click and they'll put them there. If I click G again, like so, it's a looser formation. So I can expand and have them however I want. That's all that does. I'm actually going to march through the forest, I think, with this army. So we'll put them about there. My general is going to go just behind them on the left flank. And then all of my missiles are going to be in a loose group and formation and we're going to use this hill to our advantage we're going to start the battle and we're going to move forward with the missile That's troops me. meanwhile my missiles my, my, my melee troops sorry can push forward and my general can push to the left flank so i'm thinking about outflanking i know they don't have much to be scared of they have a general of course they have some italian cavalry which can cause Cause me some problems. Mob units are not going to be a problem. They, they are the weakest unit in the game, I think. Mob units are. They, they are very easy to take out. Slingers, a good cavalry charge on them. The spearmen in the centre, that's their best unit. So it's probably worth trying to sling them and take as many of them out as possible. So, here we go. Our men are getting into position. If I hold on the space bar, it shows you where my troops are moving to. And on my missile troops, it shows me how how far their range goes so as you can see if i press the plus button here it shows me the stats so my velites uh let's see where is it shots per minute is seven oh range is 80 on them whereas range is 80 on the levies actually i think they are the same oh missile damage is actually better on the velites so it does vary they are slightly better than regular levies worth pointing out we're actually going to bring them much closer to the action in that case like so I can always minimize the map if I don't want to see that. I can minimize this, and that's everything minimized, or I can have everything on. There are certain things you can look at, and yeah, I'm gonna just have that this on for now. I can see what's happening pretty easily. If I hold, press escape, I can always exit dex desktop. I can concede defeat, resume, and options. I'm gonna show you the options quickly. Graphics, so um, if I go into advanced options, th these are my settings right now. It shows what graphics card I have, a GTX, a GTX, uh, 770 video memory um, it, Basically, it's worth working working out what's best for you and your system um, Yeah, that's, that works well for me controls So if you're a bit confused it shows you what the controls are on here as well uh, You can broadcast I don't broadcast but if you want to you can use twitch to broadcast and Yeah, that's pretty much you know everything else in interface I can choose to have projectile trails on or off I have them turned off because I find them annoying but it's totally up to you at the end of the day. So I'm going to bring my infantry forward now. They're going to come and hit. We're not going to hit them, but they are going to be in a position to attack them. My missile troops. I can I can just press one or two. I could even make my general a third unit. So I can quickly go one, two, three, one, two, three. This helps me micromanage much quicker. So I can go general, they unit, they, they. And quickly, in the space of like two, two to three seconds, I've made three orders much quicker much easier i'm actually going to issue an attack order by clicking the right mouse click button 
And my general is going to go hard up this left flank. Lots and lots of mobs that we can attack. I've got to watch out for the spearmen. Obviously, it would be stupid to charge my general into spearmen. You never want to do that, really, do you? Missiles are in position. They're going to attack the spearmen. The spearmen are the best unit. And I'm just going to throw everything in now. Because why not? <laughs> Velite is going to hit the slingers. I have 40 units of, of my cavalry. They have 80, so they would outnumber me. I'm actually going to choose or tell some of my units to attack the cavalry. They, I'm just going to be very quick about this. Probably a little bit sloppy, but I don't really see the need to to worry too much about being perfect. Obviously, the more you practice, the better you will get. But for the sake of a tutorial, it's worth just going through the basics. So we're going to crush that mob unit very easily. We're going to crush the spearmen. Their general, their cavalry has come out. They've lost a couple of men, but they are in a good position to attack me. As you can see, we are routing. When a flag goes white like so, they are routing. We're going to attack the slingers like that. And as you can see, we've routed the mob units now, which is pretty, pretty easy. And these spearmen are crumbling as well. There are some things like attack in test studio which you can click on. We can go for loose spacing if you want to. You can toggle these things on and off. I'm actually going to get my general to attack the levy slingers because they are going to take some of my men out if I'm not careful. I can actually click the inspire. That will temporarily boost some of your stats. But it has a cooldown effect so it will not last long. I'm actually going to pull my developers out because we are losing lots of them. And we're going to attack the Italian cavalry like so. My general, doing pretty good. Lost five men. I can go for a second wind and that will help uh, fatigue. And I can just throw all my troops in. So this battle, pretty straightforward. Lost lots of my missile troops because I was throwing them into the general's cavalry. And of course they are weak against cavalry units. But apart from that, we've done pretty, pretty okay. We are killing their general. There's 34 remaining. They're shaken. My general, if I go on to unit cam, this is what unit cam looks like in the heat of battle. So I've clicked the L click to zoom in. You can see some kill animations. As you can see, look. Oh, look at that. Got stabbed in the shoulder there by that guy. And there we are. That's the victory. So you can either click continue, which is worth doing. Now, I'll give this tip to you now. If I click continue battle and click the plus, you will see this green bar has gone up. Now, my general... He's getting lots of kills, as you see it's going up. It's worth continuing battle to get that first chevron underneath his belt. So what we're going to do is going to look on the battlefield. As you can see, there's some spearmen units down there. We're going to try and get this up. So it's a quick tip I'm going to give you guys in this tutorial. Sometimes it's worth, in a battle like this, to continue to get as many kills as you can. Because what will happen is my general now, I'm actually going to tell my Hastati to not attack want to get as many kills for my general as possible he might actually level up so we're going to fast forward this as you can see it's going to go up it's going up it's going up is he going to get all the kills i don't think he is it might not work don't think there's enough men left or maybe there is there might just be nope there's not but as you can see he's nearly leveled up and what I, my point would have been is if he had leveled up it gives me a good advantage then in the next battle but what we're going to do is exit are we actually going to quit battle? Because we've already won. I can save the replay if I want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to click the end battle. And this gives me a brief overview of what happened. So as you can see, I lost quite a few of them. But the rest did very well. My general had over 200 kills. Got 252 kills. My best unit on the battlefield by far. As you can see, the mob unit are terrible. They had zero kills each. And the slingers only had three and two each. It was only their general that did the damage, really. Deployed 1,280 and I lost 171, which is good. And I killed nearly 700 men. Very good fight. Did well, and like I said, it's a fairly easy battle against these. And there we go, that's the kill animation, and that shows us that we've actually won the battle, and we can take Velathry, so a decisive victory. We can occupy, if you hover over it, it tells you what happens. We can loot to gain some money, or we can raise. Now, I'm going to occupy because, of course, this is Italian territory. The culture is going to be Italian, which is good for us. So we'll occupy, and my general actually did increase in rank from that battle to a level 2, a rank 2. So we click on him then. As you can see, you've got a little yellow arrow pointing up. Click on it, details. And then click on general details here. And it tells you what he can level up. So we can go for cannon, which is strategist, plus, two cannon, plus 1 cannon, plus 1 gravitas per turn. Commander or warrior. I'm going to go for warrior. They tend to be pretty good. But of course, it's up to you, whatever you want your general to look like. 
and he's gone up a level, which is fantastic. So my spy How does have some resistance. movement range left. I'm actually going to bring him now up to the border here, Moving as far as he can go. Ariminum would be the next uh, target for us. And we have 3,300 to spend, and I actually can spend some stuff on Velathri now. So as you can see, minus 21 for Velathri. And if you hover over it, it says why. So basically, we, it's minus five taxes, minus five slaves, and minus five provincial instability. And then conquest is minus 20. That's the main reason why. That's why it's not balancing out. And it says if the public order basically stays like this or gets worse, then it will be a rebellion in five turns. It's not going to, though, because conquest will go by the next turn. So we should be okay. And we can actually upgrade Velathri so we can get a village vineyard to a settlement large vineyard. That gives us a bit more wine and a bit more everything else. So we can go for that. And of course we can expand it as well. And then we can add what we want like before. So we can go for a villa. Because of course we want to keep an eye on our food. So we can go for that. And we can get that. And that's basically it. So this is pretty much the basics for Total War Rome 2. Um, we had a bit of battlefield. We had a bit of campaign map. Um, we had a little bit of everything. We had a little bit of um, diplomacy. I've gone through all the different options. And I've pretty much done all the basic stuff. I hope this tutorial is able to help you guys out. If you have any questions, then by all means, leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want me to make a follow-up video to this and go into a bit more detail about any anything which I may have missed or anything that you want me to further elaborate on, then by all means, I will. Just let me know in the comment section below. But anyway, I have been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.